This is a young David Coulthard and the man next to him, former F1 driver and three-time Le Mans winner, Alan McNish. Despite driving for some top teams and achieving a lot of race wins, David Coulthard's career never quite hit the big moments like that of his fellow Scotsman. Unlike all other drivers though, David Coulthard has managed to stay in the spotlight in F1 for decades, whilst growing even more wealthy and becoming one of the most influential people on the grid. So much so that me and Toto Wolff are saying David Coulthard for F1 boss or any other top role in the sport where whether that's future managing director, FIA president, or team owner. But what actually makes me say that David Coulthard's business experience makes him one of the strongest candidates for this job in future? And what's the secret to his long lasting presence on the F1 scene? Welcome to The Racing House, my name is Saki, and keep watching to find out how David Coulthard built his business empire and became more than just a number two driver. <sighs> Before we get started, if you enjoy this type of content, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps with the channel. We're trying to go for 10,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year and we'd really appreciate it if you could show us some support. But back to the Coulthard Love Fest. Whilst carrying out an interview with Toto Wolf, David Coulthard got hit with a wild card response from Toto. He basically said, why doesn't David go for one of the top roles in F1? Then I started to think, what actually made Toto say that? Because he was being deadly serious. With that in mind, I thought I'll take a look at Coulthard's early career and business moves to show us why Toto had a big point. So let's throw it back. The year is 1971, it's the 22nd Formula 1 Drivers' Championship. 50 drivers took part in the season that year and Jackie Stewart won his second world title securing six wins in the process. But another Scotsman stole his thunder that year. David Coulthard, MBE, was born in Twynham, Scotland. Just looking at his career, like most drivers, he rose up through the ranks until he made it to Formula 1 where he took part in 15 seasons between 1994 and 2008. Driving for teams such as Williams, McLaren and Red Bull. During his time he earned 62 podiums, 13 race wins and ended up runner-up in the 2001 championship. It was during this time as a driver in F1 where he learned a lot about business, shadowing and spending a lot of time with the multiple world champion Jackie Stewart. But what has David actually achieved that gives me and Toto Wolff such confidence? The thing that really impressed me in terms of the businesses that David owns is the fact that he's got a large involvement and influence when it comes to race and F1 highlights. He co-owns the company Whisper. If you haven't heard of them, they're actually the company that make the highlights for Channel 4 on behalf of F1. He started this with Sunil Patel and Jake Humphrey, who you may know from other things on TV. Now I found this super cool that he's able to do a job after his racing career whilst getting paid quite comfortably from a company that he actually owns. And the work that Whisper have done doesn't just stop at F1. They've worked with clients such as the NFL, International Cricket, W Series, Sail GP, the Rugby World Cup and the Paralympics. So he's well and truly still involved in F1 and heavily invested. Another large chunk of his business portfolio comes in a brand experience company that he co-founded called Velocity Experience. And I bet you won't be able to guess who he co-founded this company with. Okay, time's up. It was a certain person called Guy Horner. The name kind of sounds familiar. And yes, you'd be right if you guessed that he's a relative of the Red Bull Racing team principal and boss, Christian Horner. In fact, he's Christian Horner's brother. If you look at the work that the company's completed over the past several years, it's really super impressive what they've achieved. Some of their work includes creating the Red Bull Racing MK7 event space, creating the W Series WHQ hospitality, the Extreme E Race Series launch, and running the 2017-18 Autosport Awards. So some real great bits of business there that really shows how capable they are of throwing great events and creating brand experiences on behalf of their clients that are involved in F1 and motorsport. And on top of this, he now has executive level experience and corporate experience. When I say this, I mean him serving as a board member for an organization where he doesn't necessarily have a financial interest in that organization, at least not one that I can find anyway. He was recently elected as the president of the British Racing Drivers Club Membership of this club is by invite only, so it's super exclusive and they actually own and operate Silverstone Circuit. So becoming a figurehead and chairman of such a prestigious organization allows him to build influence and retain a large involvement in F1 again. Looking at new series, he is a huge champion of the W Series and he acts as a member of the advisory board. With this recent move into board roles, I see him developing his abilities and experience on the corporate level. And I think this will really stand him in good stead to be a top boss in the world of motorsport. After all this hard work, the geezer can sit back and relax and have a drink at his very own pub. So yeah, 
he actually owns a pub in southwest London. So looking at all that collectively, he has his fingers in a lot of pies. I do believe that hospitality was where he actually gained a lot of his initial business experience. He was the owner of a hotel in Monaco, but he's since sold and made a sizable amount of money from the sale of that hotel. Now looking at some of the other work that he does, he's also the brand ambassador for quite a few companies, including Mercedes, Hugo Boss, Wings for Life, which is the Red Bull charity. And quite interestingly, he's actually a brand ambassador for Red Bull themselves. What does this actually all mean? For me, it made me realize he's an incredibly good businessman, utilizing his strong status in F1 to create all of these businesses in partnership with other people who may have expertise in other areas that he can benefit from. Velocity with Christian Horner's brother, Whisper with Jake Humphrey. And the most interesting thing about this for me is the fact that he's got such a strong, strong relationship with Red Bull Racing and the charity where he acts as an ambassador for them. And when you combine this with his new roles at board level at the W Series and the BRDC, I feel like he's evolving into a real F1 statesman. And in my opinion, this is the secret to his long lasting presence in the world of F1. He's constantly evolving. He's constantly building strong relationships with key players, allowing him to consistently embed himself in the F1 ecosystem. And I found this great quote from the man himself about his business ventures and what he planned to do in the future. I couldn't envisage completely how my evolution would be over the past 10 years and I can't foresee it for the forthcoming 10 year period. It is still all play in progress. Now I think this is really key as he sees his progress and development as an evolution in his post-racing career. And I really want to see him in a more prominent role in F1, maybe managing director, CEO, even if it's in an FIA role or as a team owner, because I think he's got so much to offer. On top of this, I get the feeling that he's very forward thinking and he's quite savvy in terms of marketing. So he's very aware of how things come off and how to portray things in the best way, listening to what's going on in a wider world. I also feel like he just really connects more with a younger audience and this is going to be vitally important we're going to bring new people into the sport and re-energize it because after the struggles of this year i really think this is a great opportunity for the sport to readjust and reevaluate their approach not just in terms of the f1 teams and the regs but most importantly the f1 is attracting a new and younger audience base consistently over the next few years and that just about finishes off my video about why david Coulthard's business experience makes him an ideal candidate to be a top top boss in F1 whether that's as a team principal or as a team owner or CEO managing director whatever it is also explained why he's been able to maintain his presence on the grid for all this time I really do hope you enjoyed the video until next time everyone like subscribe and hit that notification bell to ensure that you get all my latest videos